Montreal. Okay, so we both have, all three of us have uh, yes. Uh, the poll continues at the Raj 590 and at Fan 590. I already got some comments on Twitter. That's great. We're reading throughout the course of the show, uh, folks. Uh, 590, 590 is our text line. As Hi, and welcome to my shop. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is compare the, uh, the operation of these two radios. Uh, these are the last two radios that I've worked on and aligned. Uh, this is actually the better radio. This one actually has more tubes in it. It has a tube ahead of the mixer tube in here, so it has an RF tube. This one, uh, this is actually not nearly as good a radio. It has no built-in antenna. This one has a built-in loop antenna. And it doesn't have nearly as many stages of, uh, of pre-selection, let's put it that way. So we're going to compare the two of them. Right now I have this radio tuned to 590, which is uh, the strongest AM station I can pick up here. We'll turn it back up and I'll, I'll get this radio going too. That way. And, I mean, there's so many things, there's so many... You thought Tyson Berry, Morgan Riley, Jake Muzzin, three of your top four, were going to carry this team, and it just hasn't seemed to work out. There's no fit there. He's in and out of there. They're relying too much on Justin Hall. They're relying too much on their on Freddie Anderson still. It's just something just isn't there right now. And I mean, for the first time, you thought maybe they'd have a healthy lineup. And Andreas Johnson goes out now. And we're talking about oh, John Tavares is not playing as well. Oh, Mitch Marner goes out, and then Zach Hyman comes in and much turnover. Oop. And I think they just need a little bit of. Con so this radio is now. The one you're listening to, the hiss is coming out of this radio. You can still hear a little muffle coming out of there. So let's tune this one to the same signal. Now I currently have it connected to an outside antenna via extremely long uh, lead-in. So A, B, this may not work all that well. So we're here right now on the tuning pointer. It's hard to see in the camera. And we need it down here at 590. Now you're just hearing this radio. I tuned this one off. There seems to be no confidence after Freddie Anderson, and you know it seems there's a reluctance to put Michael Hutchinson in there, and you know you just hope that. Anderson is a little... Now there is another issue with the antenna for this radio and that is I've got a two, two leads coming in here for the antenna lead and a shield or, or, or ground that comes with it around the coax cable. The coax lead is not connected to the radio in any way because there's nowhere to connect it back here. There's no grounded terminal produced back here, uh, but what there is is the screw underneath. So I'm going to temporarily touch the uh, round to the screw underneath in order to, to touch it to the chassis essentially and see if we don't get a better better response out of it. Let me just make sure this one's. Just want to quiet that radio there. First, we gotta tune in the station here. Where'd it go? Didn't make any difference at all. It's hard to believe. Hard to believe. Now another way to access the chassis is through the uh, knob here on the tuning. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. I'm not sure if this is... that's more like it. Okay. 
I've been on the record saying this already, but it, especially that's a little better. To me that Mitch and I'm, I'm, I'm especially critical of him, and I, I don't know if it's fair or not. Doing it. But being a kid from Toronto myself, I felt like I don't know if he owes it to the city, but so there are lots of heterodyne sounds in this segment. There were rumors that John uh, that annoying shrill tone. Just, just below the 640, or uh, 590. And is that there with the other radio? It is. The same sound. Right there. Okay, we're going to go up to the next signal, which is 640. So the best we're going to get out of that radio. 640. I will do the same on this one. Scanner technology can make snoring a thing of the past. Visit dental snoring solutions.ca. Call Dr. Premer today. 416-224. Just below 640 is this. On this radio, what about this one? Tune down and see if that noise is there. Yep. Like they just don't care. The morning show. On Global News Radio, 640 Toronto. That noise seems a lot more pronounced than this radio. Okay, let's go for the next station. station up around 800. Hmm. Hmm. Not, not used to that one. I think this is 740, another somewhat local kind of station uh, from Toronto, that's not terribly local. Is that what's over here? Man talking? Music playing. Where's the man talking? Thank <laughs> you. 
commençons par euh, votre série là, bio, pétillant, écorté. Qu'est-ce que vous allez nous faire Now the antenna in here is directional, so... Not the easiest way to do the tune. Let's check the antenna direction. Not much variation. I think it's pretty clear that, that this radio is receiving better. The interesting thing is that this is just using a piece of wire. If, if I put the loop antenna behind me back on this radio, this radio is going to beat the living daylights out of this one. No question about it. But this should be the better radio. It says Golden Voice on it. So this is Motorola claiming that this is one of their better sounding, better working radios. So, um, now I did a very careful alignment job on this, it went very, very well, and seemed to bring this radio right up to really high performance. I've not done that with this one. I've done any more, let's say, a lower grade approach at alignment, just relying on uh, indicating meters and things like that, instead of actually looking at the actual uh, shape of the response curve alike. So what I'd like to do is, uh, yeah, I'm going to take this radio apart again. I'm going to redo the alignment on it very, very carefully, like I did for this radio, and see if we can't raise the performance of this radio above this one. It's where it really should be. That's the goal. On the other hand, this proves this radio is working really well, and I better have a ground wire coming out the back for this connection to be, to be done. I can't be, <laughs> can't be clipping it on where the tuning knob goes. And by the way, <clears throat> in case you haven't noticed, this radio no longer looks like a piece of crap. It actually looks, looks pretty nice, actually. You know, I, I repainted the front. I put a new grill cloth in it. I took all this apart, cleaned it all up, tried to get off as much dirt as I could, uh, and then just polished up the, uh, the top of it. Fantastic. That was a real piece of junk when I started. Great. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have this guy apart and ready for some interesting alignment work. Okay, so I think we're ready to start uh, by analyzing the uh, IF tuning. Now, this radio is was aligned by me, but again, just done with the indicating indicating type meters, you know, stuff like this. Didn't look at any of the shapes of any of the response curves or anything. So that's what we're going to do this time. So let me just review the connections I've made here to the radio to make sure I've got it right. We can start with the signal generator. Let's see, signal generator. The stop frequency is, it should be 470, and the start frequency should be, four, should be uh, 455 minus 15, 440. Oh, it's way off. How did that happen? Four, so 440 is 15 below, and 470 is 15 above. Okay, so 440, 470. Okay, so this is now sweeping a fairly tight sweep through the IF uh, response area. Okay, now the output is not connected. How do you like that? You're not going to get anywhere without connecting the output. We're going to pick off a B minus point here. Just right in here. Okay, for grounding. And then I have this capacitor already installed on grid 7 of the mixer tube. So we're going to inject the sweep signal ahead of the IF by 
putting it into the grid of the mixer tube, then the other side of the mixer tube is just ordinary radio without me having messed it up. Now the scope, the scope is looking at the output of the detector tube just past the first resistor. Uh, that, that's what this connection is. That should be good. I think we're all set to go here. So this is the sweep line. Let me just switch cameras here. This is the sweep line sweeping from the low frequency. <laughs> Let me just double check again here. Oh, well, that's way off again. Well, what's happening here? 412. So let me just. Uh, I don't really know what happened there. Something funny is happening with this machine. Four. Uh, so 15 below 440. Keep an eye on this guy, I guess. Okay, so that's the so this represents 440 kilohertz. And this point represents 470, and now we're sweeping between them. Now I'm going to center this very carefully here. Okay, so that's centered. So if that really is 440, and that is 470, that is 455 dead center. Uh, and what else do we need to do before we switch this guy on here? Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I think we're okay. I think we're ready to go. The output from the signal generator is extremely low right now. Okay. So, so we're still plugged into the clock, so I have to have this radio switched on with the clock switch. Let me do that. Okay, I think I believe I have switched it on, but there's no power to it just yet. Uh, volume control is down. Okay, I think we're ready here. Power on. Oh, jeez, that, that scratchy sound scared me. That's the clock motor running. Volume up a bit. See, I put this long wire in here specifically so you could pull the chassis out and still have the speaker connected. When I put the uh, radio back together one of the times, this wire got in behind the pointer. I didn't see that, and I bent that pointer. Yikes. I've straightened it out more or less, but it's still not perfect. That's, that's how things go. Hey, where's the sound here? It's almost nothing. Why, why is there almost nothing? Oh, because I got this connection. <laughs> okay. Let me turn it down. We'll start the sweep going. Actually, I need it up a little bit so I'm reassured that we're getting somewhere. Okay, so now you can hear the sound coming out of the speaker. So we know the sweep is passing through the IF, causing this sound. Don't see much on the scope yet. Why are you not working here? Let's just see. Okay, so the scope's on times one. I will turn the volume down. Should be times ten. difference. Why are we not seeing anything up there? Not sensitive enough. Okay, let's take a look at what's on the scope there. Mm. Um, so conceivably this is the uh, peak of the IF uh, pointing downwards, which doesn't matter. And it really should be sitting there. If I've calibrated everything correctly, and I haven't quite got this in the center, do I? One, two and a half, one, two and three quarters. Oh, maybe that start frequency changed again. We'll put that back. Let me just check that start frequency. 
440 start frequency 470 just a touch low let me just raise it up just a hair low here okay 470 stop frequency so 455 one two and a half one two and a half so 455 is pretty much on that line and look we're out here so the impression you get I, I get from this is uh, not on the money with the IF shape of it is terrible um, like the uh, kind of like a nice solid clean line there so that suggests that there's still RF left in the signal at this point I'm picking it off essentially this is what's going to the volume control you should look at the schematic for a minute and see if there isn't a capacitor that's supposed to kill that uh, So we're looking here at the detector and the output is generated right on this line. And you can see there's a capacitor right here to ground, so that, that's removing some RF. And we have a resistor and then another capacitor to ground. So doesn't that look like a pi filter? Two capacitors to ground with a resistor in between. We're hooked up yeah. We're hooked up here. We're hooked up right in this area. Um, and then on the other side of the filter here, here's the line that's going to carry the ABC voltage off. We could, we could connect down here, but we'll be influenced heavily by this capacitor. And it kind of make the uh, uh, scope image not look all that correct nowhere else to go and the only capacitors that are draining this well on the far side of this guy is, is this one that's going to help to cut back any RF that's in this line we should take a look at this and see if there's RF here we should I should I should take a look at that because I think these two capacitors and this resistor should be knocking out almost all the RF so what we're left with here would be an audio only audio signals. Now there's, there's no... Um, the, the, the sweep signal is not modulated. There is no audio as such. But because it's flipping through the radio, I know, uh, uh, scanning or sweeping, sweeping through, sweeping across the sensitive parts of the radio, uh, you, you get this audio sound, the uh, buzz coming out. It's not really programmed material as such. So, what should I do here? Uh, throw in an additional capacitor here. Not worry about it at all, because it's just a thing on my scope. Why do I care? Uh, look to see if RF is making it down here. I think that's worth doing. So this this line, in fact, oh no, there's another resistor there. So what might be easy to find is this resistor. Um, finding this capacitor might be difficult. Coming off, uh, yeah, you know, it could be difficult. All this, it could be really tricky finding out where these are. Um, I, I, I could work back from this grid, find this resistor, flip to the other side. Let's try that. Oh, 12 CR6. Uh, this is the tube that I originally tested as weak. And uh, I have a replacement, but I haven't tested it yet. But I did find a replacement in my collection. So I have another 12. CR6 now. Don't know if it's any good though. And since the radio was working to some degree, I'm not. Huh. Huh. Well, this is this is the, the uh, detector tube. Can't remember if I did or what the results of the diode test was on this tube. Could pop it in there right now, and with everything running just the way it is, we'll see what happens. Um, is that worth doing? Sure, why not? That sounds like fun. And I'll worry about what's going on down here after that. We'll do the fun thing. I switch the tube here. I don't even know if that tube is good. Okay, I'm all over the map. So here's my replacement tube. Maybe the first thing I'll do is I'll test this and see if I have one. 
or not to see if this is any good. Well, CR6, let's just go at it. Oh, this might be a good time to get our words of wisdom in today. <laughs> in the book of wisdom. Any page, fifth from the top. Preston's axiom, never put off till tomorrow what you can avoid altogether. I like that one. That was a good one. Anybody see one of them on there said Mother's something or other? <laughs> Not the same Mother. Okay, enough of that. Jesus. So 12CR6. 12CR6. Signal level 2, 20L, 10763, 10763, 4500. Now I think this tube tested weak, the one that's in there tested weak on the audio side. And that's what we're testing right now. D, sensitivity 40. It should come up to 1250. Come up about here. Now I saw the pilot light flicker a bit. It means the heater is drawing current. I'm trying to get the uh, camera lighting so you can see the pointer. Okay, shorts. None showing up. Ready on the mutual conductance test. 1250. Oh, it's a week. It's a week. Oh, it's a week. Very, very weak. Well, let's check the diode too. I think what could be weak is the cathode. It's the same cathode for the diode as for the uh, amplifier. Let's find out. 13760. Let's do this. One, three, seven, six, zero, and a whole pile of zeros down here. Sensitivity forty-one. A, A. Diode test one three seven six zero. One three seven six zero. So in this test, all the pointer has to do is get up above this marker here. Just have to come up this high. Okay, let's just check for shorts again. This time we're pushing the diode switch. And it's low also. Which again is kind of suggestive that the, uh, the cathode is worn out on this tube. So should we put a worn out tube in there? There it is, kind of a worn out tube in there. What difference would that make? We know for sure the diode is low in this one. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here, just as I, I'm untangling a wire. That's what I'm doing right now. There. I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out the tube that's in there and retest it. So, so we have some kind of comparative. Some kind of comparative. Okay, tube is hot. It's going to take a minute for me to get it out. Okay, so this is the 12 CR6 out of the radio. And if my voice sounds a little different, it's because I've switched on the auxiliary microphone I have over here near my tube tester. That's really bright. I don't remember the other one being that bright. Here we go. Okay, so we're set on the diode test right now. We'll, we'll do the diode test. So the diode is up in the okay range. That's interesting. That means that means if I can take this tube out and insert the bad quote bad one and see what happens. Uh, how bad is it? So now we'll do the uh, audio side of it too here. So 20L 10763 one 
zero seven six three. Forty five hundred. Forty. D. Don't miss that. Okay, so we're back to it. I pulled the tube out because I'm just unsure whether I can switch these controls with the tube in there. Uh, some tube testers you can. My other one you certainly can. I don't think you can do it with this one. Okay, quick check of shorts. GM, let's just double check here. Signal to 20L10763. 10763. 4500. Right, 40. Good. Here we go. Oh man, it's screaming good. Is this right? It's not this side, right? The D. -D. Wow, what made me think this tube was weak? It's a good one. I'm sure when I tested this the first time around that I reached the conclusion it was not good. Is there some chance I left it on six six volts when I tested it? I don't think I don't, I don't know. If you put this on six volts, do you get anything out of it? It's gonna cool the uh the heater down and the cathode down and uh, you know the color is going to drop the red's going to go and if there's no red I don't think it, it issues much stuff there it is there maybe that's what I did maybe I tested it at six volts in any case it's a goodie which is you know the ultimate test is always in the radio yeah, in the radio, this is working pretty good, actually. <laughs> yes, doubts with everything. Have doubts with everything. Nothing is as it seems. So our next undertaking now. Since I, I, well, I was going to put the bad tube in and see what happens. Yeah, let's do it. Let's put the bad tube in. Okay, so I'm not so concerned about the audio. The audio should be reduced greatly on this too. We're interested in what's going to come up on that scope. How's that look? How's that look? So all that's happened here is I changed the tube. Pretty sure of that. Here we go. Okay, I'm get the uh, scope up on the screen here. Oh, what's happened there? So that's very interesting. Um, what just happened there? So there's a pile like like crap in here. That looks like a grounding thing to me. Let me just wiggle the grounds here a little bit. Did I, did I, did I? Ooh, 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 don't like doing that. Don't wiggle it that much. Um, hmm. I don't remember the other one having this much out. And what goes on every time I move? I'm just moving back and forth in my shop here. I'm not doing anything. I'm stepping on something. What am I stepping on? Nothing. What the heck is going on here? It's hard to see what's on the screen in this camera. shock eventually doing this kind of thing. <laughs> is, it, is this loose?
Okay, we'll switch back to the good tube and, and see and see. Let me, let me put the other camera on here and see if see if this is a little cleaner in here. It's also the, the the dip here should be more pronounced. Okay, so just gonna shut the radio off. Pull that tube out. We didn't actually play the radio to hear it, but the since the triode is shot in this tube, it, it might be you know, considering too many factors changing at the same time. Don't know which one is causing what. Okay. Okay. So this is the original tube back in. You know what? I did not put this tube shield over. Experiment with that tube. So tube shield off. Original tube back in. Can't turn the radio on with my computer mouse. Let's watch that screen again. Quick, 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 quick. There are resonant points coming now. Well, so what I make of this, and it's very hard to see in the camera, I'm afraid. Um, this, this funny nonsense down in here, there, there's less of it than the other tube. Well, this tube passed the diode test. Don't know what that nonsense is. Where's my nice clean line? Where is my nice clean line? I'm tuning the radio here. There's a lot of stuff coming in. Maybe I should silence that antenna. Yeah, let me see if I can silence the antenna. Uh, I could put a solid short on it. I think that'd be foolish. I think we need to put a capacitor across it. Okay. We need a capacitor. Now, I got something with cookie. 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 short that thing right out. Why, why wouldn't I? Isn't it just uh, just connected to... Uh, no. If I short that right out, not sure of the effect of it. Short, short, the, short the grid to the chassis. Short the grid right to the chassis with the capacity. Okay, I was looking at the schematic there. If we were to do that, then we would want to... Hmm. I can't decide what to do. How to do this. Too many things at once. Again. Oh, jeepers. No, I didn't get a shock. I just got a little nervy thing in my <laughs> Son of a gun, I'm scared. I will get a shock in there if I'm not careful. Okay, 
this quiet this radio down. And does nothing whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever on the antenna. How oh, can that be? coming into the radio is actually quite low, into the IF. It's still quite low. Maybe I just haven't... Yeah. Maybe I just haven't been bold enough here. Let's, let's be bold. Now we're cooking. That's my problem. I just didn't feed in enough signal. There's a whopper of a signal there. There we are. I said it's a whopper. It's really not a whopper. Good solid signal though. We have the IF curve here. We turn the radio down. So crazy with that. The radio is currently running on 109 volts and uh, so I'm going to double check the sweep again and make sure it's still balanced the way I want it. So this is now 435 so my sweep generator is not a model of stability. Okay, 440 on the start. It's gone low on the end also. 470 at the end. Okay, that's good. Now we can rely on this. And let me center it. Assuming the very start and the very end really do mark those frequencies. You know, I can check that. So just watch this and see where this ends up. Right on it. And then watch this point and see where this ends up. Right on it. Okay, so these are definitely the very end of the sweep. No question. So in the middle, let me get this balanced now. Yeah, one, two, and almost a half. One, two, and it's pretty close, isn't it? fraction. Now we look at the shape of the curve. First, it seems wider than the last radio I did. Maybe, you know, I can start to sweep further out. Maybe I should do that. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to move the sweep out further. So, looking at the start frequency, I'm going to reduce it to uh, 430. From 440. Start earlier. Okay, that's 430, and then the stop, and I'll move to 480. Four, it's going to say 470 right now, moving it up to 480. Okay, so it's a bigger sweep now. Sweep. So in effect, this is squeezed. That, that, that's, that's how this ends up on the screen. Now we get a nice curve, but it doesn't look doesn't look beautiful to me. It doesn't look dead on either. So let's see if we can move that curve around. Uh, we'll stop for a moment and uh, just change some settings here, some video settings. Okay. So the objective now, it's a little bit random, is to adjust the four. Uh, slugs that are in the two IF cans try to keep that shape at its maximum amplitude but move it so the uh, little dot the, 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 this point is right on top of this line and ultimately the shape is equal on either side this is kind of the objective here stick my fingers into a working radio 
Okay, so it just picked one of the four adjustments. We'll see what this one does. So watch in the uh, shape now. It's obviously not going the right way. If I bring this right on. Look, whoa! <laughs> this is the only one that needs adjustment. A little further. So, you know, I did this using the voltmeter technique. And I have to admit, I was not as careful as I, I could have been in doing this. Wow, can I get this in there? I don't even remember doing this. Oop. Something, something not quite right there. Okay, we're watching, watching the curve now. bottom now from the top. This would be the IF can uh, closer to the speaker. And then the first IF this at all. I'm sure I did. What's this in the air? Okay, so, so I'm going to do the uh, slug in the same transformer, the other slug in the same transformer here. shape when it's here, but it's actually sharper over here. Let's just keep working on it and keep it on that on that center spot there. I think that's the best way to do this kind of thing. I'm trying to get rid of this funny little bump up here. I'm just going to fool with them. So, I, you know, when I look at this, I, I'm the one working the control, so I can kind of get a feel for it. But I think the peak up, there's four peaks in here, one on top of the other, making this, making this whole shape. I'm moving one of them across it. Now, I can see it as I do it. I can tell where it is. It's right here, right now. Here. Coming down. Of course, this is getting biggest, so it's right there. Back to the one that we got this huge boost off of. So I see I, I moved this brother slug. Two of them kind of work together here. That's really sharpened up. So maybe I can't, maybe I can't correct this a little bit, but what would be brought out that would be in here would be so weak compared to the signals up in here. You, 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 this, this probably might have zero effect on anything. I'm just fiddling around here. Well, that's a huge improvement, I think. That's a huge improvement. Now in the course of doing this, I accidentally got my uh, adjustment into the front end coil I had set before and I, I winged it out of there. So I don't know now about this front end coil. But as for the IF, I think we're right on the money. Or as much money as we can get on it. Shh. 
don't need to listen to that. So next step would be to try to see the front end the same way I did before to verify the local oscillator using the SDR and uh, sweep, sweep through the front end of the radio basically looking at what's being presented to the uh, to the IF. I think that's the way. Now there's a number of stages in the front of this radio so if, if I can somehow do them one at a time that would be much better I think. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the schematic here. So, um, so this is an RF coil that I accidentally misadjusted and there's one adjustment for it. Hey, how come you're not looking at this? Well, what, what did I do here? Okay, so we look at the front end of this radio, and uh, what do we see? So this is RF. This whole first part here is RF. This is the converter tube here. It's that single slug tuned secondary coil in this transformer, which this is what I winged out, of, out unfortunately. I wish I hadn't done it, but I did. Um, so if we want to, for instance, tune this properly, we could look at, well, we could try looking at the output on 5, pin 5 here, and we would pump in the signal just into the antenna somewhere just into here somewhere, pin one of this two. Pin one or in the antenna if we can get at it. And then that'll isolate my equipment on either side of these tubes and we should be able to see clearly what is going on in this. Okay, but you know, it's past lunchtime for me, so I'm gonna stop at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna stop at this point. I, 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 maybe I've shot enough video to, to, to publish, publish this part. This is the straightening out of the IF and the next part uh, is actually going to be complicated more uh, yeah it's going to be complicated because I'm doing it <laughs> okay see you after lunch ciao literally <laughs>